Hey my friends, welcome back to a new video today. We have a beautiful topic to talk about. Firstly, the name of this video is Tomorrow Your Life Changes Forever. And there's a lot of uh, beautiful things to, to share with you. But firstly, why I've chosen this name? Um, because we need to learn to train ourselves to, to think that the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. Tomorrow is another day to experience more of what you're working on today, right? And as soon as we start training ourselves to look like that on life, what starts happening, we start expecting the best possible scenario, right? So we go from survival to a greater degree of awareness of our, our inner talk, our, our emotional system to creation. We start, we raise our energy, we become more creative and we use it for creating, right? So if you're ready for this, we can go deeper. So firstly, as every single day I share with you, firstly, a short message, something I write down and I share on my Instagram page, Attract Passion. You can go there and check it out. Follow me there. Write me a message if you have anything to share. And the today's message goes like that. Oh yes, I know that your doubts can be loud and clear, but I also know that you're capable of achieving what you intend. You have to trust yourself a little bit more and believe that you are capable of greatness. You've done it before, so you know it's true. You have to overcome the old set of behaviors and stay true to the new ones. Change the pattern, change your life. Trust the divine timing right now and believe in yourself. <laughs> so let me know in the comment section if this resonates with you because it is powerful. And there's a beautiful quote by Eleanor Roosevelt who said that today is the oldest you've ever been and the youngest you will ever be again. So we need to think about this for a moment. Today is the oldest you've ever been and the youngest you will ever be again. Think about this. Because in front of you is a beautiful life, but you need to let go of perfection. You need to let go of perfection. So if you're wondering why you're such a perfectionist, I can tell you why. Because we're all looking up to make the best out of what we're doing. But we are holding such a high expectations that most of the time we rather don't do anything because we don't believe we are capable to reach those high expectations. So most people never try. But if you lower the standards of perfection, you will notice that every time you improve a certain part of whatever you're doing, you are perfecting yourself, right? So it's not about reaching that certain state of perfection. You actually reach a greater level of perfection of yourself when you improve something that was unhealthy before for you. Or let's say you're an artist and you're working on a craft and you're improving your skill. You're perfecting a virtue of self-expression and that is powerful. So don't allow yourself to be blocked or stopped by any kind of perfection, any kind of idea, idea of perfection. Like you may think, oh, this is what I need to create and if I will not create it that way, then I'm a failure and I'm a miserable uh, creator. <laughs> Don't think like that, my friends. You're far greater than that. And we also need to understand that today's beginner is tomorrow's master. So you can't master anything if you're not willing to make the small little steps every single day to remind yourself that your life can change forever. If you're willing to make the small steps forward every single day. Stay aware, okay, this is happening in my system, but I'm willing to walk on. 
right? I'm willing to move on. Something heavy maybe happened to me in the past. Maybe I was traumatized. Maybe I feel a deep sense of depression. But let's see what people did that overcame that state. You may feel tired. You may feel exhausted. You may feel like life put you somewhere where you don't belong. Do you feel like that? Because if you're there, you're there for a reason, to learn to find a way. So one day you will be able to show others what you did. Not in an egoistic perspective, like, look at me. But in a compassionate perspective of a healer, like, this is what I did and it helped me to overcome what you are moving through. So we need to see ourselves as, as ants in the collective, helping each other, moving through pain so somebody else uh, may hurt less because of our willingness to overcome it. So it's like a work of the Christ, right? And that's why people say, that when you go through a spiritual awakening, you, you, move, you, you, you tap into the Christ consciousness. When you understand that sometimes we need to move through the pain to experience healing, right? It's not avoidance of the pain, it's moving through the pain, recognizing, okay, this is what I sense right now, I don't need to run away from that. I don't need to run away from that. You may have a heavy relationships uh, with people around you. You don't need to escape that. Even though sometimes we need to move away to, to shift our perspective. For example, when I had um, really, I would say, unhealthy relationships with my family. And me and Maya decided to go to travel for months. We went to travel for months. We've distanced ourselves from uh, people we know. And... We were alone, we were traveling. But what happened when we distance ourselves from people that we are used to have around us, we start to look at them a bit differently. We may notice that sometimes people want best for us, but they show it or express it in, for us, negative way, right? And when we distance ourselves away from those people for some time, we notice actually they just wanted the best for us. But they had, maybe they had, uh, they, they haven't got the right uh, word to express. Sometimes we're lacking um, some, the right information in our vocabulary system, right? So we would express something we want to express in uh, as compassionate or kind way as possible, or, or better said, um, truthful way. Right? Because um, our kind of natural sense is that we want best for all. We want best for all. But sometimes our idea of what's best for somebody else may be different than that person's, that person's idea of what's best for him or her. Right? That's why we're all here on our own unique journeys of evolution, growth, and expansion. Right? So let go of perfection, my friends, and remind yourself that tomorrow your life changes forever in a positive way because you're doing the changes today. When I've started looking on my life, like what I have today is the product of my past. What I will have tomorrow is the product of today. I've started doing things a bit differently. I've changed my approach on life. I've recognized that actually I'm in control of the good things in my life. I am creating them. And when bad things happen, I can learn from them and therefore I transmute them into good things, right? Every time when something bad happens, I can find a lesson in it and therefore I've transmuted bad into good, right? And that's what what uh, the work of alchemy is all about. The symbol of alchemy is to find any metal and transform it into gold. But it's a symbol, it's a story 
of finding anything and transform it into its greatest potential. So you need to know what is your greatest potential. And maybe as a little kid, you, you, you were living more in that potential than you are right now because you've been through conditioning. You've been through uh, many dark phases in your life. The Nigredo phase, right, in alchemy, the dark phase, the dark night of the soul. You've been through it and it formed you, it shaped you a little bit. So now maybe you, you don't truly know who you are, but you have a sense that, that maybe somewhere in the past you were more connected with yourself. Do you feel like that? Like somewhere in the past you've been more connected, connected with yourself, but what's happening is as we are awakening during our life's experiences, what starts to happen is that we become more aware of that sensation. I call it the, the, the voice of the soul. When we notice that actually this voice is becoming louder once again and all that conditioned mind is kind of losing its power and we kind of uh, learn to differentiate between the voice of the mind and the voice of the soul and that is a powerful realization an individual can experience. When you notice, okay, I feel that doubt, like I said in that uh, message, I said, I know that your doubts can be loud and clear, but I also know you are capable of achieving what you intend, right? Because intention is not coming just from your mind. You feel inspired to set an intention because your heart inspired you. So what it means, it's a poetic language. I, lo I love to use it because it sounds beautiful, right? But uh, the, the core meaning of saying your heart said something to you is that um, below or behind that uh, intellectual mind, the conditioned mind, the learned mind, there's deeper intelligence that can only be felt. You can't think about it. You can develop philosophies around it, but it doesn't matter how great your philosophical understanding of anything is, it will not allow you to feel it, to sense it. You can only feel it when you learn to detach from analytical mind. And neuroscientists will tell you that most people who learn to slow down their brain waves will experience a sense of connection with that higher intelligence. So what happens, for example, when we meditate, when we become more present, the brainwave frequency will go from beta, from high beta brainwave frequency, which is quite stressed um, state we're in, more aroused, more alert state. We go into a more peaceful state, alpha brainwave frequency, where we become more creative. And what is, what is creativity? Creativity is ability to think with a spark of divine right? With a spark of divine in our thinking. That's the creativity. When you become creative, that spark of divine start influencing you. That's the creativity. That's why we can still use concepts that we know, but we form them in a divine way. That's creativity. That's, that's why art is so powerful. That's why you need to buy some art and put it into the walls of your home so it can be charged a little bit with the divine. You can find many great artworks on our Etsy shop. I draw my passion, go there and check it out. Many inspiring art. That's when the divine starts influencing an individual and they start creating, writing poems, books, making paintings, drawings, music, playing a piano. Have you noticed when somebody's playing a piano, he's not thinking, he's not really there. Like something would be using his or her body and he's just in the flow. That's when the divine takes over, when the force, that greater intelligence takes over, right? That's what happens when we slow down our brainwave frequency. If we stay a bit more present, brain will go into theta brainwave frequency, which is a state of hypnosis. In that state, you can reprogram yourself. You can uh, use some kind words towards yourself and you may start reprogramming your own uh, mental attitude that you have towards yourself and towards the world around you. When you start doing that, you start deciding that 
your life right now changes forever. And tomorrow, you're about to experience something great that will be a creation of today's action, right? But you need to let go of perfection. You need to make sure that you're not forcing the process, that you're actually kind of in tuning with with uh, what that um, uh, peaceful inner sensation has to say. Because every time I know for myself, every time I get into that inner state, I feel what I need to focus on in my life. I feel it. I don't think about it. I feel it. I feel today I need to talk about this with you. Because many of you may be going through that. Yesterday I've mentioned I was meditating in the morning and I felt that let's talk about the power of momentum. And we've talked about it. And you see, sometimes simple things can can uh, bring us the most profound realizations because we need to recognize that life need, life needs to be simple. We shouldn't complicate stuff. We shouldn't compli- complicate the philosophy we have about how life works, how our bodies work. It's all quite simple. When you come to the right information, you will notice something that truly resonates with you was explained in a really simple way, but profound, right? That's what Albert Einstein was really aware when he said that a good scientist is able to explain complex concepts in such a playful and beautiful and simple way that a little kid can understand. So when it comes to spirituality, for example, many people have many different beliefs and ideas. But we need to make it also practical so we can use what we know in our lives to see what truly works and what's just a philosophy, right? And for that, we need to put things into practice and believe that uh, we are capable of of, um, improving our lives' experiences in all levels, health level, relationships, Um, relationship with yourself, financial level, anything. You need to believe in yourself, right? And you need to have a certain level of self-control. So when you will fall into the lower emotions, you will not stop start running away from yourself. You will actually acknowledge, okay, this is all a part of my system. This is where I, where I sense the fear of my ancestors, the anger of my ancestors. Like science is saying, in your character, in your personality and in your DNA, there's 16 generations of your ancestors. But quantum physics would say to you that you have a memory in your cells from the first cell that was born on this planet billions of years ago. That's how powerful you are. And you can actually access that um, memory. If you learn to listen to your body, that's what people call instinct, right? We have a natural instinct. That's why we are afraid of the things we've never seen, because we have a memory, like a bite of the snake, for example, or any of that. We have a memory of that right? But we also have a memory of, um, of ability to upgrade ourselves, to, to change a pattern, because we did it in the past. Something was um, not how we wanted it to be, and we changed it. Or we can watch somebody who did that. We can look at or study somebody who did that, And we can kind of resonate with that person. We know how it feels like. If that person is able to do that, I am able to do that. Because we are all family here, brothers and sisters, right? So make sure that you remind yourself that you're not not a, a broken one. You're not a victim here. You're a work in progress, right? You're a work in progress moving through a process of greater self-realization, 
which is leading you to a greater self-knowledge, which is leading you into a greater state of awareness where you notice, oh, I am actually really powerful. I actually love my life on all aspects. And you notice that um, it was there within you all the time, but you've been distracting yourself. So don't allow any technology to distract you from your own inner power and intelligence. That's how you will stay in tune with what your heart has to say and you will be able to create tomorrow <laughs> the best possible life by today's action, right? So my friends, I will leave you here. I hope you found something valuable. I'm sending you lots of love blessings and power i hope you've enjoyed in today's painting as well and thanks to all of you for supporting my art in our etsy shop i draw my passion you can go there and check it out also check out our instagram page attract passion where you can find daily messages those quick short messages to inspire you to prepare you for the day that is ahead of you until next time one love